In this video, we're going to talk about host pool level disaster recovery in Nerdio Manager, starting with version 3.1. The concept behind host pool level disaster recovery in Nerdio Manager is the ability to create an active, active DR configuration at a host pool level by allowing the system to automatically distribute session host VMs across two different Azure regions automatically. And then as users connect, they will be uh, routed to these VMs uh, sort of randomly and be automatically distributed across the two environments. So if there is an outage of one of the regions, the VMs in the second region continue running and users, all they have to do is log back in and be placed onto the already active VMs. There are a few considerations for this. In order for this to work, the networking in both regions must be configured to communicate with the Active Directory domain controllers, or when in the future you'll be using Azure AD joined VMs for AVD deployments, uh, Active Directory will no longer be necessary. But for now, in production scenarios, you do need line of sight to the Active Directory domain controllers from networks in both locations. Let's take a look at how this is configured. So let's go ahead and pick a host pool from our configuration. So for example, let's go ahead and pick the sales and marketing host pool uh, and go under the properties page right here. And you'll see there is a new page here called disaster recovery. And disaster recovery is disabled by default, but can be easily turned on. And let's just read some of the messages to make sure we know what the prerequisites are. So enabling disaster recovery on this host pool will cause newly created VMs to be automatically distributed between the primary and secondary Azure regions. And the FS logics profiles will be automatically re replicated between storage locations in both regions using the FS logics cloud cache technology, which is linked right here and really explains what cloud cache is and how it works. Now, the nice thing is Nerdio Manager takes care of configuring all of this for you. And you will see how simple and easy it is to enable active active disaster recovery. When we enable, uh, disaster recovery, then we are presented with several options here that we get to select. But even maybe before we go to the disaster recovery configuration, let's take a look at our FS logics config. And one important thing on the FS logics page is that cloud cache must be enabled. So if we select a profile that does not have cloud cache enabled, like this one, for example, and we go back to our disaster recovery page and try to enable it, we'll be given a warning that to enable DR and this host pool, the selected profile must be using Cloud Cache and you need to modify the current one in order to be able to use this feature. So let's go back here and let's select custom. Let's check this box. Uh, actually, maybe let's choose this one. Default profile, let's make it custom, check the box, select the file share and save. So now we have Cloud Cache enabled. And if we go back to disaster recovery, turn it on, uh, that warning message no longer comes up. So remember, prerequisite number one is you must have FS logics with Cloud Cache enabled, which is simply just checking that box on the FS logics configuration, which can be done either from this page at the host pool level, or more likely will be done from the FS logics profile configuration on the settings integrations page. The second prerequisite is we need a secondary network defined. So the way disaster recovery configuration will work is it will be based on a VNet that you select as the secondary network. That is what's going to determine the region where the VMs will be created. Now, this may be a VNet in another region, which is the most likely use case for this feature, but it may also be a VNet in the same region if there was some other reason to distribute session hosts across two different VNets. So in my case, my primary network is in the North Central US, 
And I do have a secondary network defined in the South Central region. So I'm going to go ahead and select that network. And remember, it's important that in the secondary region, this network can have the same connectivity to the Active Directory domain controllers as we mentioned earlier. Then we can choose a resource group to use. Now, this resource group may be the same one as the primary region resource group, or it may be a different one. So you may just put all of your session hosts into the same resource group, which is what I'm going to do in this case, or you can split them up. And then you have to choose a desktop image template to use for your DR configuration. Now, the important thing to keep in mind is in, in order to select a desktop image, it must be replicated into both regions. Now, what are the two regions? I have my primary region, which is based on my primary network, which is North Central US. And now I have a selected secondary network, which is South Central US. And as you can see, I'm not able to select any of my custom images because they are not replicated to South Central. And if you mouse over the image, it will tell you why that is. However, any Azure Marketplace images can be selected because those are available across all regions. So I'm going to go ahead and choose a version of Windows 10 20H1, 21H1 that is available from the Marketplace. Now, if I wanted to use my existing images, I could easily do that. Let me show you how. I'm going to click cancel here and come back to this page in a minute. We can go to desktop images. We can take any of our existing images, like this one, for example, that's available in North Central. We can go to set as image. We can select South Central from the list of regions and click run now. And this will cause the image to be replicated into both locations, making it available in the second, uh, in the DR configuration page. So it's as simple as, as doing this. All right, let's jump back to our marketing, um, sales and marketing host pool. We'll go to properties. We will go back to disaster recovery, turn it on, select our uh, South Central US network, select a resource group, select the image we chose previously, and then we have to specify the secondary FSLogix storage location that is in the region where the selected network is. So what we're gonna do is click here. This is gonna enumerate everything that can be seen from my subscriptions that are linked. For example, in this case, I have an Azure NetApp files um, a NetApp, um, Azure NetApp files volume available in the South Central region. So I'm going to select it as my secondary FSLogix storage, and I'm going to click save and close, and this will configure my host pool for DR. Now, once this saves, let's actually see how this works in action. So I just enabled DR on this host pool. If I click and open this host pool, you can see I have two VMs in it already. And both of these VMs are in the North Central because that is where this host pool was pointing at uh, earlier before I enabled DR. Now, how do I actually get some VMs provisioned in the DR region? So let's go ahead and click on the properties of this host pool. And we are going to go under auto scale configure. And you will notice a message here that says active, active DR enabled. You will notice that the selected image is the one we chose on the previous page. And what we'll do is we will say that we want our base capacity to be instead of two hosts, let's make it four hosts. And once I click save and close, what I would expect to happen is for Autoscale to create two more VMs and both of these VMs, because we already have two in the North Central, both of the new VMs should be created in the South Central region, thereby load balancing my session hosts across the two regions, the primary, the North Central, and the secondary, the South Central. And here we go, here are the machines being created. If we click on details, we can confirm that that's in fact happening. So if we look under parameters, you'll see that it is using a secondary network. And if we expand this configuration, we will notice that it is being placed 
on the south central region as expected. And then if we look at our FS logics configuration, we will see that it's going to configure it with CCD locations, which means cloud cache. And it's going to configure this host with the connection strings that's going to include the Azure files as the first connection string, and then the primary north central location as the secondary location. And what this does is it actually configures cloud cache so that when the user logs into a VM, it mounts the profile from the closest file share rather than mounting it across the WAN into another region. That way, the user always get the highest performance of, um, of, of FS Logix and cloud cache technology takes care of the replication of the data between the two locations. So every VM in this host pool will have FS Logix configured with cloud cache with both locations, the primary Azure files in North Central and the secondary Azure Neta files in South Central, and it will replicate the profile into both. But the one that's gonna get mounted and used will depend on which VM the user connects to. In North Central, it's going to connect to the local file share, and in the South Central, it's going to connect to that local file share. So that is all we needed to do in order to configure the active active DR at the host pool level. It takes care of distributing the VMs. It takes care of FS Logix configuration and profile replication. And our only prerequisites are having a network with line of sight visibility to domain controllers and having an Azure files or Azure NetApp files storage location for the FS Logix local profile copies. I hope you found this video useful and I'm looking forward to seeing you in future videos. Thank you.